On the docket tonight, the case against Kyle Rittenhouse, accused of shooting three, killing two during the riots in Kenosha. Today, inside the courtroom, legal arguments about whether or not a use of force expert or experts will be permitted to testify. As I just mentioned in the prior segment, use of force experts usually reserved for cases involving police. Kyle Rittenhouse, not an officer, 17-year-old kid, kid from Illinois who was in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Let's take a look at those arguments. What we're talking about specifically, much of with Dr. Black, is his analysis of the situation from a non-law enforcement individual um, and his ability to analyze those videotapes frame by frame for the timing. When we've looked at this case, and I've discussed it with numerous people, when one looks at the still pictures, just still photographs, it seems to take forever for the events to unfold. When one looks at the videos, it seems to go snap of an eye. And we tried to break it down for time, so how fast these things are occurring, how fast Kyle Rittenhouse is having to make his decisions, and that goes into the mindset of whether it's reasonable for somebody of his age and stature in that situation. How does Dr. Black's expertise, training, background assist the jury in making their decision? This is the central question of my motion, Your Honor. The videos can be analyzed uh, in front of the jury, frame by frame. A stopwatch can be used to time the uh, sequence of events for the jury. Arguments can be made as to what that means in terms of thought process, reaction time, stress, decision making, whatever we want to argue. Um, but I didn't hear anything in that narrative that uh, suggests that Dr. Black is necessary to help this jury make this determination. Anybody can use a stopwatch to time a sequence of events in a video. Anyone can stop a video and watch it frame by frame. There are opinions as to the intent of people. Uh, I don't think that's something that Dr. Black should be giving an opinion on. I don't think he's qualified to give that opinion. He acknowledges in his report he hasn't spoken to the defendant, so he can't guess what the defendant's intent was. He can't give an opinion as to what the defendant's intent was. He certainly can't give an opinion as to what Joseph Rosenbaum or Anthony Huber intended because they're both dead. So. His guess as to their intent is no better than the juror's guess. Okay, so what should happen? Let's bring back in our think tank, KC, early Sue Ann Robinson, and Michael Bixon still with us. KC, do we need, and I say we, I mean the jurors inside the courtroom, do they need a use of force expert in a case like this where it's not about a police shooting? This is a self defense case, the defendant, a 17 year old. Absolutely not. The problem with a use of force expert is if you get the, the uh, Dr. Black to testify as to the type of force that was needed in the self-defense case, then you have nothing to really measure it by when you're talking about a civilian. In this case, you can't measure it by the training and experience of a particular officer, which is common for a use of force expert. So the only thing he's going to do technically is speculate as to what was going through the mind of Mr. Rittenhouse. And also, the defense wants to break this down frame by frame, understandably. But this incident did not happen frame by frame. It happened within a two to five second window. So again, this is the defense putting on zealous advocacy, but the use of force experts should not be allowed to testify because there's nothing to measure that up to when you're dealing with a civilian. Michael Bixon, I know um, sometimes uh, criminal defense attorneys love experts because it's a way to kind of sneak in the testimony of the defendant without actually putting them on the witness stand. No, no, and, and you're absolutely right. Um, I, I think in a case like this, though, the use of the expert is going to be really good for the defense if they can get him in. I do think they should be able to get him in as well. I mean, you're talking about someone who's talking about a higher standard um, of due care than the defendant is supposed to exercise in something like this. Obviously, for the defense, that's great if they can say that, you know, he acted within the sort of standard of care that you might see somebody like an officer 
uh, do in a situation like this. Uh, for the prosecution, you hear them talking about, well, they could use, you know, they don't need to bring in the use of force expert. They could use things like a stopwatch or other things like that to discuss some of the aspects of the events as they unfolded. And that's very true. They could, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be able to bring in this use of force expert to discuss those things. So I absolutely agree with the defense. I think they should be able to bring them in. I think this could be a great tool for them as well. Sue Ann Robinson, your, your thoughts. You know, experts are brought in to, they're supposed to be brought in to explain things to a jury that they might not understand, right? It's, a, it's an issue that's a little bit more complicated and, and you need a little, you need that expertise, whether it's a scientist or, you know, an expert in anything. Your thoughts about this expert for this trial? This is not that. This is not a situation where an expert is needed. It's a reasonable person standard. If they want an expert on being a 17-year-old, then get a 17-year-old, one of the ones that were at home at that time doing what normal 17-year-olds do, and have them testify about what a reasonable 17-year-old should have been doing. He does not need a use of force expert. Let me, let me ask you, uh, Casey, if in fact this expert comes in, do you think Kyle Rittenhouse does not take the witness stand, that uh, the defense will rely upon this expert explaining what's going on through the mind of the defendant. I would not expect Mr. Rittenhouse to take the stand. Why does he? If you have an expert explaining what he went through, what his mindset was at that time. So what else is Mr. Rittenhouse going to testify to? And I do believe this is why the defense is fighting so hard to get this expert. It's not necessarily to... Uh, allow him to give the jury a greater explanation as to what his mindset was and to break the frame down is to prevent Mr. Rittenhouse from testifying. So this is definitely a defense strategy, and I hope that the judge rules accordingly and does not allow the expert to come in and testify. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this trial is just around the corner. Take a look on the screen. November 1st, that's one week from today. One week from today, the trial starts, and guess what? It looks like this trial may very well start before the final jury is seated in the case against the three men accused of murdering Ahmad Arbery. So keep your eyes on this one as well here on your front row seat to justice. Of course, we'll continue to let you know uh, everything that's happening inside that courtroom.